It's time to put Band-Aid off. Getting hit by auto flow and light. Oh! Just like a funky hammer. It has to do with number one, the stability of the tank, and number two. If you're watching this on Sunday, first, thank you. Second, Top Shelf Aquatic is actually having a live sale right now until I believe 11 p.m. today. On IG, we took a quick look at what they have on sale. There's a nice variety, some chunky colony in too, so it's not just frags. And everything is marked down pretty tremendously on their websites. And on top of that, they have a lot of like 10 bucks, 20 bucks frags. And shipping is a flat rate of $29 and less in Florida, which is a little bit cheaper. And the live sale, I believe, goes until 11 p.m. today. To participate, you can go to Top Shelf Aquatic's website or they have a thread in Reef to Reef. The other bit I want to share is that I do have a discount code for you and that is IR10. That will take 10% off your order. And it's good doing the live sale and beyond, meaning that right now you can use it and in the future you can use it as well whenever you shop with Top Shelf Aquatic. All right, thank you for joining in on Sunday and uh, back to the show. All right guys, today's gonna be another really hands-on video. Today's mission is to address this Zoa rock once and for all. I've done this once before, we're gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna pull this rock out, make sure I get every last piece of Xenias, as well as mushroom off this rock. And it's dropping babies all around the tank like back there as well. This is gonna suck. But the second thing that I'm really excited about is actually addressing the Aiken Lord back there on Michael Musa. Please move, yellow tank. Now you see the one down here is actually really happy, doing really well, inflated, nice color. I've been calling it the Drip Lord because number one it looks like it's dripping down and number two a can Lord and Michael Musa Lord so Drip Lord you get it <laughs> so that one has not been happy it was due to things picking at it like the money little bunny that got moved and also the light and the flow is a little bit too high for his liking so while we're talking about Michael Musa aka a can Lords back in the old days I was talking to Daniel from New York who is a wealth of information since he's one of those OG awesome reefers he mentioned that based on his experience as well as talking to a lot of vendors that these a can Lords really preferred par value of maybe like 50 to 70 so the danger of keeping these rainbow Aiken Lord in higher par value is that these rainbow ones, remember the rainbow ones may actually morph into say like red, green or orange and that's it. They cannot morph back meaning that if you move them back into a lower par value that's it. They're still going to be red, orange or green. So this is one of the interesting new bit that I picked up about Aiken Lord. The rainbow ones may morph color and actually stay there because it's a one-way street if they're put into higher power value than like 50 to 70. That bit is new and I thought it's really interesting. And of course, as always, do your own research. Do not just rely on this video for your sole information in terms of keeping Aiken Lord and keeping Aiken Lord coloration. So this kind of connected that with some of the other stories I've been hearing about. Like some people are telling me that all the Aikens turn red or turn orange in their tank regardless of what color they came in. And maybe that is why. Interesting, right? Interesting, right? No. Interesting, right? No. Interesting. No. <laughs> what are you chewing? The dog just going crazy. Eating breakfast right now. Trying to do this real quick. So today's mission is to move the A can. But before I do that, I want to get some car reading to make sure I know where the light came from and where it wants to be. Looks like it's under roughly 100 par of lights. Uh, this down here is doing really well. I thought the reading would be a little bit lower but it turns out power value is not that different. So maybe it's a water current, but whatever reason, this guy's not happy here, let's move it. My initial plan was to move this Maxima Clam, this guy right here, Ooh. who is under about 130 par, if I remember right. Yep, looks like he's getting about 130 par on his sand bed right here. Initial plan is to move this guy to the top of the column rock, but it turns out the column rock is actually getting a uh, lower par value than where the clam is right now. So what I'm gonna do is gonna remove the A-cam first, slowly crank the light on the left side back up a little bit to a point where the maximum clam is gonna be comfortable there, then I'll see about moving the clam to the column rock. If not, we'll just put some other corals there, totally fine. But the bottom line is that the A-cam is just not happy here. So let's go ahead and find it a better home. Finding a better home. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck, yo. You got super glued down. I've been avoiding doing this for at least a month and a half. I really don't want to do this. Then why was, are you doing this? I really hope that A can pull through. I really hope that I can adjust the light to make A can happy, but I could not. It's time. It's time to put band aid off. And when I lift this rock, you understand why I don't want to do it because there's so many things on here. Look at this. No. Oh no! What? <laughs> Why are you farting? Why that all? <laughs> okay, let's do this. I, I, 
I think we got it. Hit this head. Oh! Nice chunk of it. Let me show you the result real quick. We got the Aiken heads. Got one big piece, one small piece, and one tiny piece. Uh, and then on the rock itself, we clear out this area. Uh, later on, I hope to be able to put a clam there. It's like a nice flat bed. So that was not as painful as I thought, but I also hope to get the a can out in one single piece. That was not the case. However, it was not bad. We got one large piece and then uh, one small and then one tiny piece. Mm. I want to wiggle a little bit and make sure it's down in there tight. Oh, no. Who's that? Hmm? Oh, what the? It's a piece of leaf. Let me just drop it. This piece came out in a really interesting shape. Uh, I like this. Oh. And here's one head that was kind of like damaged. It was on the side and it was getting hit by the flow and whatnot. It was not happy. And here's a piece of the Monty that I need to remount. Okay, mission number two for today is to remove this piece of Zola rock and remove as much of the Xenia and mushroom as I could. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time filming this because I've filmed this before. Basically, I'm gonna pull this whole rock out, use a tweezer, the hard tweezer to pull out as much of the Xenia as I could, and use scalpel to scrape off as much of the mushroom as I could. All right, nice and clean. Now we're ready to put the slab back into the rock. Does that even make sense? Put the slab back into the rock? Put the slab back into the tank? The next morning. Yo boy, got a fresh cut. What do you think? Anyways, this is not a lifestyle vlog, although it's uh, shaping up to be one. But today I want to show you what the tank looks like with the A-can moved down there. You, you can see the A-can, this only the day after. A-can's already puffing up and looking happy, so that's really fantastic to see. Same thing with these little polyps completely trying to heal right here. One not so awesome thing that I want to show you guys first before we move on to this video is look at this. We got a freaking wasp nest happening here. And I really want to halt this before it gets any further because I don't want these wasps to like uh, spend all this time building a nest and I just tear it down. So I'm gonna look into it, see how I can kind of discourage them from continuing to build. It looks like a, a black wasp. It looks scary, so let's close the door. Anyway, sorry for the tangent, but today's mission, well, this whole month's mission has been kind of like reorganizing the coral now that they're a little bit larger. Uh, so we've done the A-can. Next up, I'm going to rebuild the Euphelia Garden. As you know, in the past, the Euphelia Garden uh, was, was not successful. It was due to a combination of factors like the rabbit fish chewing on it, uh, the flow was a little bit too strong and it was ripping tissue off the skeleton, etc. etc. So I think finally we got a handle on things and um, I'm slowly moving the Euphilius back here. Uh, next up, I'm gonna move these guys. Now this is not a standard hammer per se. Uh, some people tell me that it's a framer because it's like a hammer and frog spawn hybrid. Um, now I'm not sure if that's true or if it's just like a funky hammer. But regardless, it is a pretty unique piece. It has grown really well. It went from like 4.5 heads to about uh, 7.5 heads right now. In an effort to combine all the similar type of corals in one cluster, I'm gonna move this guy to here. So this is done. We're gonna wait for him to open, see if it's happy, and we clear out the spot for the blasto. Next up, we're gonna move the pink booby chalice, and for that, let me show you from the top. By the way, I'm still using the chocolate case as a top-down viewer, simply because it's so wide. But I did manage to pick this up during the Marine Depot going out of business sales, uh, because for this one, I can kind of push it down into the water a little bit more, so I can get a little bit more leeway in terms of like angle shots. Right now, I want to show you the pink booby chalice in the center frame. You see that it's grown really well, it's spread out. As great as it looks there, uh, chalice can get kind of aggressive in terms of stinging out sweepers to uh, sting neighboring corals. So I want to remove that before this guy has a chance to uh, really send out stingers to sting the toward corals as well as the zoas. Although, looking at this, it looks like the approach that this chalice is doing is actually growing around and encasing the zoas. As you can see what it's doing to the orange one right now. Mm. the next day. All right, reefers, as we go into the weekend, I want to give you guys a quick update on how the tank is doing after all the chopping I've done this week. First up, let's take a look at the A-Can Lord, Micromusa. The Drip Lord is looking beautiful as ever. And in the back, we see the uh, A-Can that I moved uh, from this column rock here. It looks like it is adjusting really well. Uh, this guy's up front, they kind of hurt from staying on the edge, probably getting hit by auto flow and lights, but it seems to be recovering and poofing up and sliding to 
to the right, we see this Zoa rock that I was cleaning up early this week. And we see that some of the polyp are closed up, probably some fish is picking at it or something else is going on. But we also see that I have missed a few of these zinnias and actually missed a bunch of these mushrooms. So unfortunately, it looks like I do need to pull this whole rock out again, do one more good cleaning. Uh, one thing I learned is that the tweezer I got did not work too well. It used to work really well, so I think I may have got some like super glue stuck on it. So I need to get a new pair. I just use like razor to scrape these guys off to make sure it's super clean. The other big thing that we did this week is moving the uh, pink booby chalice and you see some of the skeleton there uh, so most of the coral is here now i have successfully transplanted it onto the column rock and it has been stable so i think it's good the green toadstool is kind of pissed off right now some of the polyp is starting to peek back out finally but i think it's not going to be until like a week or two before it's back to normal and for now i have moved the uh joseph's white polyp crown toadstool up to the top until i find something else to put in that spot one thing I have been keeping an eye out on are these uh, special Zoas that I'm um, babysitting for Lin. In particular, I'm keeping an eye out on the GMK because it's shrinking a little bit. It's not too happy. Everything else seems okay, uh, especially the exosphere actually sprouted a little baby. That's the one right behind the GMK up front. Um, with the GMK, I feel like maybe it's getting a little bit more light uh, than it likes. Right now, we're getting about like 130, 140 par right here on the sand bed. So I may move this guy maybe to this area with like lower flow, lower light to see how he reacts. Because um, I think just in these two weeks, it will shrink a little bit. Not melting because all the pieces are still there, but uh, definitely shrunk. I don't like to see that at all, especially... Uh, at about $150 per pile. The other thing I want to touch on is the Euphilia Garden. As you saw early in this video, I moved this whole piece of uh, Framer. Framer, Hammer, Frog Spawn Hybrid uh, to the back of this section right here. I want to build up this portion to be the Euphilia Garden. Uh, it seems to like the spot. Not much flow, which is totally fine. I would like a little bit more flow, but at the same time, I feel like the uh, pink tip green torch is getting banged around a little bit as I dial up the uh, MP40 flow and the MP10 flow. So I just like kept it about, I think it's about 13% right now, strength. Uh, seems to be getting just the right amount over there. Um, kind of hesitant cranking it up, but we'll see. I experiment gently and we'll see what goes what goes on. One thing I'm a little bit hesitant about is leaving the torch here so close to this uh, hammer colony right here. Uh, right now when there's flow, it's okay because the flow is pushing the torch up this way so the torch just won't be able to get to the hammer to sting it. But later on, as the hammer begin to expand, uh, this, this was actually in recovery and recovered really well this week. But as they recover more and more, I feel like they'll proof up more and more. And at some point, they are going to touch. So I do need to either A, move the hammer down and forward a little bit, or B, move that gold torch. I think ultimately I'll probably move the hammer because the gold torch seems really happy there and the hammer doesn't seem as, as picky. So I may just like shift the whole rock out and move the hammer out. We'll see, developing story. I also want to use this chance to really show off the uh, rolls bumped of an enemy because I realized I haven't talked about it much at all in this tank. So within the span of about nine months, this rolls bumped of an enemy has grew to the size of uh, the one in my 45 gallon cube that took up like the entire cube. That guy is probably a foot in diameter at this point and sometimes it gets a little bit larger depending on the time of day. So um, it's definitely impressive. I am kind of tempted to just uh, maybe fill that whole rock out with Rolls Pops of Anatomy. I feel like that would be kind of cool. But at the same time, in the back of my mind, I always want to try a Chicago or Colorado Sunburst Anatomy at some point. And um, it's kind of tricky mixing the high-end NAM with a, a more general or common version. Uh, especially if it's wild caught. Good thing this one is not wild caught. It has been propagated for a long time. Uh, so it may be okay, but at some point I'll try it. I hear some people have success in terms of uh, mixing high-end lamb with a uh, more common lamb by keeping them in two separate tanks first and then slowly uh, transfer some water between them so they get used to each other uh, chemically or bacterially uh, at some point. So I may try that, I may try that. But because of that, I'm kind of holding off adding any more rolls of an enemy into this tank. I think one is good, especially if I plan to have a uh, CSB, whether it's Colorado or Chicago uh, down the road. So one more thing I want to touch on is the SPS. The SPS has been doing really, really well, as you can see here. Um, I probably should do a top-down view next time uh, to show you guys. 
but especially those two older ones, the Miyagi Torts, they are growing really, really fast. The other thing I'm really happy to see is the Oregon Torts actually started regaining its color. Remember, when I first got it from Lin, it was like electric blue, and then it kind of faded to like a dull blue, but it looks like the blue is coming back again, so that's awesome to see. The other thing that I'm really happy about is actually that tiny nub of a frag right between the two uh, Miyagi Tort. It's a Fox, Fox Flame. I got that from Lin as well, but uh, it out here in the bottom portion, so I kind of just cut it off and just planted the top portion. This is like a tiny nub. And to be honest, I was not holding my breath because it was uh, out here ending pretty badly, but it seems like it has stabilized, and from what I can tell from here, it looks almost like it's encrusting at the base too. And speaking of encrusting, look at this right here. It wasn't doing too much, and then all of a sudden it started encrusting really, really fast down the down to the base. So that's awesome. It looks like the SPS in this tank is doing excellent, and I think a large part of it has to do with number one, the stability of the tank, and number two, the reef moonshiner's method. I keep talking about reef moonshiner methods. I'm not selling you anything. I'm not getting any kind of commissions, but dude. Uh, addressing the trace elements on top of a stable, um, I guess, big three really, really seems to help the system. But anyways, I'm going to talk a little bit more about SPS a little bit down the road because right now it's kind of like a developing story, right? Success has only been with me for the past couple months in terms of SPS, so it's a little bit too early for me to talk about them. But for where I'm right now, I'm really, really happy. Alright guys, this update has a lot of little hands-on things in terms of my reef tank and that's what this channel is about. Basically, I want to share my journey with you as a reef keeper. I'm not somebody here to teach you what to do or how to do it because I myself is not that great at it as you can tell. Once in a while, I will try to rope in some expert to share the experience or if I hear something that seems concrete, I'll share it here. But always with the preface that, be sure to do your own research as well. Don't just rely on this as a single source of information. With that said though, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12. 30 p.m. shop. By the way, how about hitting that like button for the Michael Musa Drip Lord?